Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome in the kitchen with Tally Faye. Hope everybody had them a good day today. It was a beautiful Sunday here in Iola, Texas. We've enjoyed the day. We're fixing to get in here and eat us some supper. I'm going to show y'all how to make this. Really, it's quick and easy, or I think it is. It's quick and easy. Um, it's very flavorful. It's a it's one of those that just, it just, it's soothing to eat it and stuff. And it's one of those soups. And this is called bacon and tomato soup. It's so simple, y'all. But the flavor is just amazing on it. And it makes the real thin pot liquor on it. It's not a stew. It's a soup, okay? And it's made with your, you do it with your canned stuff. But you need, I should have got this out. Let me get it. <clears throat> what you want is one of these, one of these big, one of these full packs of your bacon and you really don't want one of the packs of the really good what i call the good eating bacon this is that bacon like we use for wrapping you know jalapeno poppers with and stuff you know it's that pack of cheap bacon it's any kind you want to get or whatever on it but it takes one whole pack of it and i've already got the jump on it on this far i just took it and i just cut it in half I mean, cut it, started cutting it up in little bite-sized pieces, and I fried them up. So you fry them up in your big pot that you're going to make your soup in, and just fry them real easy, though. You don't want to burn them, have a burnt flavor to them at all, but you do want them crispy, okay? You're going to fry all the fat out of them and get them crispy, but you cut this up into a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of little bite-sized pieces, okay? One of these cheap packs of bacon is what works beautifully for this, okay? Now, like I say, I got a jump on it already. Let me put it down here. And what I've done is I fried up that entire pack of bacon. So I'm going to take this bacon up. See, I got it fried just right and stuff. I don't want it, you know, I don't want it burnt. But see, I've got all that bacon grease in there. What I want to do is get this bacon out of here. And don't be worrying about draining it and all that because you want some of that bacon fat in there and them drippings for f part of your flavoring, right? And this, when I say bacon and tomato soup, this is really all about the tomato in it. See, after you cook down one of them cheap packs, look at that. That is all that makes. That gives you an idea of what you get out of one of them packs. But anyway, it's, that's what you want for this, for sure. Okay, now, I have, I have my oil in here, my bacon drippings that I've got left. Well, I don't want that much. I want some in there, but I don't want that much. Now, you want to do your soup in the same pot that you fried your bacon in because of all that goody in the bottom of it. Okay? So, see, I'm going to pour it out about like that and just leave me just enough to just barely, just like that, okay? That's all it's doing. That's how much I want in there. Not a science. Just leave just a, a small, small amount in there. Because after you did all that cooking in there with it and everything, it, it's already got all that goody in there that's going to come up. Okay, now, here's the thing. I've already washed my hands and stuff. I uh, got them ready for it. Now, if you want to use gloves, you can do it. But... I just I just use my hands. Y'all know I'm not afraid of that. As long as I've washed my hands, I'm good with it. But starting out, you're going to need three cans of whole tomatoes, y'all. Not stewed tomatoes, not diced tomatoes. The stewed ones have the, uh, <clears throat> you know, has the little vegetable things and the little celery bites and stuff and everything. <clears throat> you don't want that in there because it'll take away from the tomato taste that we're trying to get in this, that we want in this soup, okay? So, you're going to need three of these 15-ounce cans of whole tomatoes, all right? Well, I just happen to have one of the big cans, so here's my three, okay? <laughs> Make it work, right? You're going to take them. Now, let me show you. Well, the thing I'm saying about, about the tomatoes, about... Um, oh, and they come sliced, too. Don't get the sliced ones. The, what you want is you want these tomatoes, what I call, torn. So I just take and poke a hole in it with my finger, because if you squeeze it, it'll just squirt everywhere. But you just take it and just squeeze it, just like that, okay? Take it 
poke a hole in it with your thumb and then just squeeze it down a little bit. You're just breaking it up between your fingers where it's where it's torn. You're still going to get a few little squirts here and there. It's a little bit messy, but nonetheless, okay? So see, you just tear your tomato bites up a little bit like that. Because you want these pieces of tomato in there, but you don't want like a solid how a diced piece is in there. The diced one just, I mean, you could use it in a pinch, but it's, it's not the same as a torn tomato, okay? And don't dare try to use the crushed tomatoes in this. That's way too thick and soupy. Because this is supposed to be a thin soup, y'all. That's what's good about it, okay? So I'm just taking them and tearing them up a little bit. Give them a Give them a pinch through your fingers. Just a little bit. Nothing's got to be perfect sizes or none of that, see? It's very simple. Just do that real quick. Three cans of your tomatoes, okay? That one didn't want to tear up. Two more. These whole tomatoes are beautiful. Okay? All right, there's our tomatoes. Just like that. Now let me go wash my hands off. Alright, that's all the hand stuff you got to do on it. And another thing I love about this soup is that there's, there's no chopping. You know, you don't have to do any chopping in it or none of that. Don't put, you don't want any onion in here. The whole thing, again, I say, is about this tasting like tomato, okay? It's all about it tasting being a tomato soup. It just so happens the, uh, the bacon is what just makes it work. The only other thing, y'all, that we're going to put in here that is so worthy is some whole kernel corn. I've got it drained, see? You drain this. Your tomatoes, you put in there juice and all, okay? Now, your corn... If I've got one can of this. I may not want this whole can because I don't want that corn to override the flavor either. But those corn bites in there are so delicious with that tomato and bacon. It's it's just because the corn is sweet, you know, and it just it just offsets it perfect. So one can of whole kernel corn. You could get one of the little smaller ones and it'd probably work just fine because you just want a bite of that here and there. Because it's all about the tomato. Okay? Alright. Let me get it lit up here. Now, we got to get our water to add to it. So, let me see how many cans I want. Uh, you know, like I say, this is uh, the equivalent of two of the 15-ounce cans, right? Now I want lots of hot liquor in mine. So that's two cans. Four 15 ounce cans. Let's see what that looks like, y'all. Let me see how I feel about that. You know what? I want one more can in there just so. One more of this size can. Let me get this. So for this quantity of soup that I'm making so that you can write it down and give yourself, you know, something to go by, you want five of your 15 ounce cans of water added to that. Three cans of tomatoes, five cans of water. There you go. Three cans whole tomatoes, five cans of water added to it after you've torn your tomatoes up. Now, we're going to season this up. See, it's, it's going to be very uh, thin liquid in there. Oh, that juice is so good in there, y'all. And see how the tomatoes are in these, these irregular bites and when you put it in your bowl you've got just different chunks of tomato in there and the this is absolutely a tomato lovers 
soup, okay? And y'all, I think that this would be a great one to have uh, during your holiday uh, weekend per se or whatever. Now you may you may not want it on the table as a soup on the side, which I do. It don't think I would. Not think it. It's delicious and it, and it gives somebody some different flavors, something different to add to the flavoring of these Thanksgiving and Christmas meals, right? But the great thing about it is, is you can make it in this pot and then you can pour it up. It's one of those that you can pour up in a crock pot on the bar somewhere or whatever on the counter and it will stay perfectly, uh, the consistency will stay perfect. It doesn't do like a stew does and start getting thick like gravy after it's set there or whatever. It stays, it stays, the pot liquor just stays thin and stuff and set you some little bowls over there and a little tube. I think saltines are the best with this. I love saltines with it. You might find a different cracker you like with it, but to me, the saltines are the best, really. Um, but put your little tube of crackers there with it and a thing of little bowls and spoons and just let them ladle it up out of there theirself. I guarantee if they eat one bowl of it, they're gonna come back and get a second. It is that good, y'all. But what I love about it as well is it's so easy. It and that and some of these things are great to have for these holiday meals. You know, say uh, on the weekend or whatever, say you've had your turkey and dressing thing or whatever and your ham and all that and stuff, uh, and then you still have company that stays over the weekend making a big pot of this soup, you know, say the following day for something to follow up with to feed people, like let them make sandwiches out of the turkey and ham and have a bowl of this soup on the side, you know, to go with it, uh, soup and sandwiches. It's good, y'all, okay? So... We're gonna get this heated up. I wanna get it to boiling. And uh, once I do, then we'll add our seasonings to it. But let's get it heated up and get it, start bubbling around in there. All right, so now I've got it at a rolling boil. And so I wanna, you know, stir it around in there. I've been scraping the bottom of my pot, you know, every now and then while I'm waiting on it to start boiling so that I can get up all that goody, any of that bacon flavor that's in there, right? So now that I've got it at a rolling boil, I'm gonna turn it down to like medium-ish. Medium-ish, is that a word, y'all? I want it to boil, but I don't. it don't have to just sit there and just be whoa. But you want it to be uh, boiling so the tomatoes and the water can, uh, you know, combine together really good so that your juice isn't just doesn't taste watery, but see, look, you want it, you know, and you can kind of do that when you're stirring it. Take your spoon and just kind of look at it and see the color of it. And, you know, when it starts getting, you know, nice and red, you'll know that your tomato has cooked into that water good enough. So that's just a, you know, four or five minutes, something like that, letting it sit there and boil and simmer, okay? So we've done nothing to it so far, right? Just water and tomatoes in here. <clears throat> now... We're gonna take our corn and go ahead. I'm gonna add, let me look at it and see y'all. See, that's about three quarters of this can. Let me see where I'm at on it. You know what? <clears throat> we'll go for it, okay? And that'll make the recipe easier for you to follow. One 15 ounce can drained of the whole kernel corn, not cream, okay? Drain it, make sure you drain it. You don't want that corn juice in there. Now, see how it's just a speckle or two here and there of the corn like that? That's perfect. That way you get a little bit of bite of it here and there. And like I say, it has uh, its own natural sweetness to it. We're gonna add us a little bit of sugar to this, so don't be tripping out. If you don't wanna add the sugar to it, you don't have to. But I like to add a little bit of sugar in with my tomato stuff because of the acid deal going on. I always, I've always liked that it kind of breaks some of that part of it down. Okay, it's gonna start boiling again. I mean, I'll turn it back up, here we go. We've added our corn. Now, we're gonna salt it to taste. You have to figure that out, okay? So we're gonna salt it. I'm gonna do just about like that. And now, just for grins, I'm gonna measure this, y'all, because I really don't, you don't wanna get too much of the black pepper in there, but you want a little bit, okay? So for this big old pot, mm, I don't think I want that much. I'll start out with it. I'm gonna have to taste it. And you're gonna have to taste it when you're making your, 
getting your pot liquor stuff all ready. But I'm going to take me one teaspoon of the black pepper. Let me see. Okay, we'll say a teaspoon of black pepper. Now, let me stir that in there. If you get too much black pepper in it, you start breaking away, taking away from that tomato taste. So, you know, some of that stuff, you want hints of the flavor in there, but you don't want anything to override the tomato. It's all about the tomato, okay? There we go. We've got that going on. Now, for the sugar, I'm going to, this is a big old pot, y'all. This is one of them six-quart pots, so... I have me a tablespoon here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put start out with just one. I'm going to try that. That's probably going to do it. Put one tablespoon, measured tablespoon of sugar in there. Now, let's stir it up. Let it give it a second to kind of combine together with the flavors, because you're not going to put this bacon in here until the very last. That is the last thing you're going to do, is drop your bacon in there, okay? Now, I have a little bit of dried parsley here that I'm going to just sprinkle in there. If you don't have any, it ain't no big deal, okay? But put you some dried parsley in there if you got some. It looks pretty in it. I don't think it, I don't know if it gives it any flavor or not, y'all, but I like the way it looks in it. It gives it a little color in there. They look pretty in it. Sprinkle you some dried parsley in there if you got it. All right. Let me get me a little coffee cup here. We're going to, I'm going to turn it down to low now and let it just be, now we've got everything in there. That's it, y'all. That's it. That is what goes in this soup. We have three cans of whole tomatoes, five cans of the water, one can of your corn, whole kernel corn, drained, um, salted to taste, a teaspoon of black pepper, a tablespoon of sugar, and a dash of, a good sprinkle rather, of dried parsley. That's what's in there, okay? Now, let me see. You got a taste of it, and you'll know when you taste of it if it, uh, you know, needs more salt or even, you know, even some of the pepper or anything like that or whatever. But like I say, if you get too much pepper in it, it takes away from the tomato we thing going on. We know that's hot, don't we? <laughs> okay. Without a doubt, I need more salt. I want more salt in it. And I'm going to put me another tablespoon of sugar. So it's two tablespoons of sugar and a heavy dose on the salt, y'all. Okay? The salt is important in there since you do have the sugar. you got to make those weigh each other out, right? Because you can overdo it on either one of them. And that's why I say add it one at a time, one little th measurement at a time and taste of it and then you'll know you know what you've got on it i might even want a little more black pepper in mine than i have what did i say i put a teaspoon in there we might do two teaspoons in it but let's see what it does here now that i've added that look how pretty it is though see it's got a wonderful look to it Oh, much better. See, that's starting to bring that tomato flavor out. When you add that sugar and salt in there, it makes that tomato flavor come alive. It gives it life, y'all. So don't be afraid of putting, I'm telling you, don't be afraid of putting that sugar in there. You'll be surprised, you know. And um, you don't have to overdo it, but you want some in there. It makes that... It makes that tomato just be really, really good. Okay. You know, if it, you just have to keep tasting of it. But once you've got enough salt in there, oh, I said I was going to add me a little bit more pepper, y'all.
So I'm gonna go for two teaspoons of pepper in mine. And that should be plenty of it, plenty. Plenty, plenty. So now we're gonna let it sit there like that. Give it a minute. Give your seasonings time to cook down in there. Look here, y'all. I want, I can see them in there, but I want just a little bit more just because I want to. It looks so pretty in there, your parsley. And like I say, I don't even taste it. Dried parsley, I don't understand dried parsley. I've never been able to taste it in my foods. If I'm wanting that, I get fresh parsley, but for looks, it looks great in there. Okay, now we're gonna take our bacon and dump it in there. Stir it in there. And you just have a bite of it here and there, here and there. And when you do bite into it, it's so good in it. But it's nothing but a tomato soup that has bacon bites and some corn bites here and there in it. And that is it. If you put onion in it, it changes the whole flavor of it, y'all. It takes away from the tomato. It does. And because I've been, I, you know, y'all know I like to cook with onions. And I just don't, I just don't think it, 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 it gives, it takes it to a different uh, realm of flavor when you put the onions in there. Even if you saute them in your bacon and stuff, it's still, it's wrong flavor in there for what I'm wanting y'all to see about this tomato flavor in here. But y'all, that's it. We're going to let it sit here. Let it simmer a little bit. Just turn your fire down and let it sit there. You want it bubbling, okay? Get it bubbling. I'm going to get it back bubbling. And then I'm going to turn my fire down keep it bubbling for about 5-10 minutes maybe. Tops. And that way by then all that flavor comes out of that bacon even more in there. And it's going to... Uh, I haven't even had the camera on there. Oh, sorry, y'all. All right. Here's what it looks like. Let me get you a little. Like I say, though, just let it start bubbling, stir it around good in there. Reach down in there and get. Like I say, there'll be bacon bites in it through and through. is some kind of delicious y'all let me see look that's what it looks like just that and that that pot liquor's thin and it, you sip on it it's a sipping you know it's a sipping soup so i really want y'all to try this and think about it being one of the soups that you can serve at your uh, family gatherings over the holidays coming up okay Bacon and tomato soup, y'all. You've heard, you know, I've gave you the main measurements on it. And like I say, you play with the pepper, the salt, pepper, and sugar in there yourself. But just do it a little bit at a time first. But, and taste of it along the way. And you'll get that. All of a sudden, you'll realize you've got that tomato flavor, the, the pot liquor flavor exactly where you want it. And you're like, stop right there. That's it. That is it. It is delicious. So there it is, y'all. Bacon tomato soup. We're going to get us a couple tubes of crackers and get in there and sit down and finish watching uh, ball games tonight. So I hope everybody had them. A wonderful weekend. It was a beautiful weekend here. And, uh, you know, we just stayed busy all the time. You just do, right? So y'all take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And uh, God bless y'all. And I love you. And I'll see you next time in the kitchen with Tally Faye.